Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Laura Carroll and Emily Grover? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background in this case, including the timeline of the alleged crimes then offer my analysis. This case takes place in Cantonment, Florida, which is just north of Pensacola. In October of 2020, a returning homecoming queen was crowned at the J.M. Tate High School. Her name was Emily Grover. She was 17 years old. Her 50-year-old mother, Laura Carroll, worked as an assistant vice principal at Bellevue Elementary School, which is not far from the high school and in the same district. Laura had access to a district database called FOCUS. Students would use the system to view academic information. It contained test scores, grades, some medical information, and other items. The system that's used for the homecoming court elections is different than FOCUS. It's a third-party app used by the school called Election Runner. In order to vote on Election Runner, someone must have a student's identification number and their birth date. Officials in the district became suspicious about the vote, which allowed Emily to ascend to the high rank of homecoming queen. The election runner app flagged several votes as fraudulent. The officials thought that maybe Emily or Laura had voted by using Laura's access to focus to collect ID numbers and birth dates of students. This changed the outcome of the election in Emily's favor, granting her the enormous power of the throne. School officials at Escambia County School District notified the authorities and the police started investigating. They found that hundreds of votes were actually fraudulent. 117 votes came from the same IP address in a short period of time. They determined that Laura's cell phone and a computer in her residence had been used to cast 246 votes in the election. Laura's credentials were used to access 372 high school records since August of 2019. 339 of them were students at Tate High School. In addition to this information technology evidence, multiple witnesses said that Emily Grover described using her mother's focus account to cast votes. The authorities believed that it was Emily Grover who obtained the ID numbers and birth dates of students from the focus system. Then both Emily and Laura cast the votes on Laura's cell phone and computer. On March 15, 2021, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement arrested Laura Carroll and her daughter Emily. By this point, Laura and Emily had retained an attorney. The attorney had asked the police to notify them if the pair was going to be charged, they would have surrendered. Instead, the police sent several officers to Laura's home and surrounded it as if they were closing in on serious criminals. Laura and Emily were charged with three third-degree felonies and one first-degree misdemeanor. The felonies include offenses against users of computers, computer systems, computer networks, and electronic devices, unlawful use of a two-way communications device, and criminal use of personally identifiable information. The misdemeanor was conspiracy. Even though Emily Grover was 17 when she allegedly committed the crimes, she has been charged as an adult. Laura and Emily are facing 16 years in prison. Laura was fired from her job at the elementary school. Emily was expelled from high school, and the University of Western Florida rescinded an admission offer. Laura and Emily were interviewed by a TV station in Florida. Laura said that she could not explain how the fraudulent votes were traced to her phone and computer. Neither Laura nor Emily wanted to talk about evidence they claimed proved their innocence. So they said it existed, but they wouldn't say any more. They said that they have become outcasts in the town. They are going to fight the charges in court. They rejected a plea deal, which would have involved zero jail time. It's not clear if that plea deal involved a felony conviction or not. Laura said that she was not willing to plead guilty to something that she did not do. She said that winning the homecoming queen was not important to her, and it was not important to Emily. 
she indicated that her daughter would have won even without the fraudulent votes. Essentially, they're saying that they have no motive. Now moving to my analysis. The prosecutors in this case claim that Laura and Emily committed serious crimes. They tarnished the dignity of homecoming and rattled parents with their actions. Laura said this is just a technology mix-up. This brings me to the question, are Laura and Emily guilty? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea of guilt, starting with the inculpatory evidence. Hundreds of votes were cast for Emily Grover using an account linked to her mother's phone and computer. Laura's account was used to access an inordinate number of Tate High School records around the time of the alleged crime. Emily allegedly described to friends how she could use her mother's account to win the election. Investigators indicated that some of the students who were recorded as voting did not vote. For example, some students said that they tried to vote but received a message saying they already voted, as if somebody had used their credentials and beat them to the vote. On the day the votes were being counted, a teacher at the high school received an unsolicited text message from Emily in which Emily indicated that she had heard someone was cheating or hacked the system early in the morning. School officials said that Laura admitted she let Emily use her login for focus because hers was not working. They also said that Emily admitted that she used her mother's credentials to look at other students' information and apologized for doing that. A few students told investigators that it was well known that Emily Grover logged into her mom's focus account to access the grades of other students. During one interview, Laura said that if any crime was committed, the punishment doesn't fit. This is an unusual thing for someone who's innocent to say. Now moving to the exculpatory evidence. The defense attorney said that 124 votes connected to Laura's cell phone were cast in one 20-minute period. He suggested this is not humanly possible. He has also suggested that the prosecution cannot definitively say that the votes came from one IP address. Laura and Emily did not appear to have much of a motive to rig the homecoming queen election. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Laura and Emily are guilty? Based on what we know so far, I think they are probably guilty. Here's what I think happened. This is just my opinion. Laura allowed Emily to use her credentials on a regular basis. Emily had this idea to stuff the virtual ballot box, so to speak. She got a little carried away, and many votes were flagged as fraudulent. This led to an investigation, and their activity was discovered. This case has drawn a lot of attention for a number of reasons. Some people think that the punishment that Laura and Emily are facing is too severe. Other people believe it's right on the money. The charges appear to be based on accessing student records, not rigging the election. The idea that Laura may have given Emily access to confidential information. The anger in the community is split between the privacy concerns and about rigging the election. People believe that the homecoming queen is an important position, and it's terrible to have the integrity of the election tainted. Here are my thoughts on this. If someone can be fraudulently voted into the position of returning homecoming queen, how can anybody have confidence that society can function? If something like this can happen, we have to be concerned about other problems. It's a slippery slope. First, it's the homecoming queen election, then it's the prom queen, Next, the senior superlatives elections could be compromised. Somebody could be next to a person who won most likely to end up in prison and not really know if that's true. Was that person fairly elected? If that person was Emily Grover, maybe so. After this, the corruption could damage the integrity of the yearbook committee elections. Once that noble institution fails, everybody knows what comes next. Zombie apocalypse. Instead of brains, the zombies are looking for homecoming court positions. All this started with homecoming queen election fraud, something that seems minor in every conceivable way, but yet somehow tears at the very fabric of civilization and creates a breach of the space-time continuum that could endanger the welfare of the galaxy. People must have confidence that the tremendous power wielded by the returning homecoming queen is only granted through a fair election. Imagine if just anybody was given the broad 
and pervasive powers of this position, like having the ability to select the color and composition of a bouquet. It's hard to imagine that power being in the wrong hands. It could lead to pandemonium. In all seriousness, I can understand why people are upset. Confidential information was accessed. If these two people are guilty, then a penalty is warranted. I don't see this as a case involving a felony conviction. I view this as a misdemeanor, no jail case, with the opportunity to have their records expunged six months later if they stay out of trouble. Prison needs to be reserved for violent offenders and on occasion people who steal a lot of money or damage a lot of property, like in the millions of dollars, not accessing a high school grade reporting system. Moving to the next question, considering that it doesn't look good for Laura and Emily, why are they fighting the charges? First, as I mentioned, it's not clear if the plea deal involved a felony. If it did, I can understand the reluctance to plead guilty. A felony conviction is designed to be highly punitive and to destroy people's lives. I think the prosecution may have simply been heavy-handed and forced these two into a corner. Second, if they are guilty, the personality characteristics that would facilitate somebody committing this ridiculous crime would also be consistent with being stubborn and denying responsibility. For example, arrogance, envy, grandiosity, vanity, and impulsivity could be common elements between both behaviors. Unfortunately, Laura and Emily are playing a dangerous game by taking this to trial. The stakes are high. They will probably have to serve some prison time if they're convicted of all those charges. I wonder if the prosecution is not affected by some of those same personality elements. They don't want to back down either. What lesson can we learn from this case? I think the community involved in this scandal has placed an inordinate quantity of weight on the integrity of the homecoming election. I understand the concerns about accessing confidential information. That was certainly bad. But for people to be profoundly upset about who gets elected to a meaningless position seems like a waste of time and effort. The criminal justice system was not created to mediate every single dispute that people can have. It was not meant to right every wrong. Laura and Emily allegedly made a mistake. They have certainly been embarrassed and had other consequences. How much are they supposed to pay for their behavior? It worries me that so many people are all right with trying to convict these two defendants of felonies. It seems a little harsh for something that doesn't really matter. Stealing the homecoming queen election is like stealing an empty box. But at least with the latter, you still get the box. Those are my thoughts on the case of Laura Carroll and Emily Grover. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis to be as intriguing as a homecoming court seeking zombie apocalypse. Thanks for watching.